I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue is, are you feeling the burn? Senator, great to see you. Good, how you been? I've been well. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. An exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Senator Bernie Sanders on the environment, homelessness, health care, and Hanukkah. Plus, <laughs> or you can go and say, I'll be back. Our best moments from 2019, the newsmaking interviews, fiery debates, and a whole lot of fun. That's the move. Time to dance. Special edition of The go. Issue Is starts right now. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. Senator Bernie Sanders is consistently in the top tier of every California presidential primary poll. Following the recent California Democratic primary debate, he held a massive rally in Venice. Here it is with Alexandria Casio cortez the New York Congresswoman. And he held a town hall on the environment in Moreno Valley. Backstage from there, he spoke with us for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. Senator Bernie Sanders, welcome back to The Issue Is. Good to be with you and, again. And good to have you back in California. Um, of course, uh, climate change, one of the most important issues uh, here in California. At this event that we're at now, you're talking about the Green New Deal. There's been so much said about the Green New Deal and so much misinformation about the Green New Deal. What do you think is the biggest misconception out there about it? Well, I think the biggest misconception is that we don't need aggressive action uh, to combat climate change. In fact, you have people out there, including sadly the President of the United States, who's actually denying the reality of climate change rather than leading the world. In fact, the scientists are telling us they have underestimated the severity and speed in which climate change is ravaging our country and the planet. We are talking about if we do not get our act together, major cities in the United States and around the world being underwater by the end of the century, massive drought which will limit food production, acidification of the ocean which will kill off whole lots of the fish uh, population, extreme weather disturbances, massive flooding. We are fighting now to save the planet. Right. That's what we're doing. And I'm proud to say that we have introduced the most comprehensive and aggressive climate change proposal, the Green New Deal, which by the way will create up to 20 million good paying jobs as we transform our energy system. Yeah, we had uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger on the show recently who's done so much work on the issue of climate change. We were with him when he installed California's one million solar roof. Sure. Um, and he was talking about the, the idea that maybe you don't need a Green New Deal, just follow what we're doing here in California because California's been so aggressive on this. And he also talked about the issue um, that he felt that environmentalists have not got the messaging right on this uh, by using words like climate change, global warming, that you should use the word like pollution and make this real world for people. What do you think about that? Well, I, I, two things. I mean, I think California has done a great deal and is certainly one of the leading states in the country. But we have to be even more aggressive. I mean, we have to be, I don't have to tell the people of California about climate change and about drought and about the horrible, horrible wildfires that have done so much damage to the state. As we speak, Australia is literally burning. Um, uh, and I think in terms of messaging, I guess what I would say is, is we can do better. And one of the points we can make is that we can create up to 20 million good paying jobs transforming our energy system away from fossil fuels. That means massive retrofitting our homes and our buildings to make them more energy efficient moving, creating a, a transportation system which is not based on fossil fuel, investing very heavily in wind and solar. Certainly California has done that, but we have to do even better here and all over this country. And of course, um, climate change is such a big issue here. The biggest issue in every poll is homelessness. We've walked Skid Row together. We did, I remember and, that. Uh, what do you think is the, the role of the president because um, some people say this is really of a local issue. What do you think is the role of the president when it comes to the issue of homelessness? This is not a local issue because I know it's a serious problem in California, but you know what? It is a serious problem in virtually every part of this country, including my own city, Burlington, Vermont. Um, I think we have to take a deep breath and, and from a moral perspective, ask ourselves how it could be that when we have three people in America owning more wealth than the bottom half of America, massive income and wealth inequality, we have tonight over 500,000 Americans, including 30,000 veterans, who will be homeless, sleeping out on the street, or in shelters. That is not what this country should be about. And our job is to start building and investing 
in not only affordable housing, but low-income housing as well. And when we talk about the housing crisis, Alex, it is not just homelessness as serious as that is. It is also that 18 million people, including a lot in California, are spending 50% of their income on housing. How do you get by if you're spending 50% of your income mm -hmm. on housing? So we have an idea, we have a proposal that will build up to 10 million units of affordable housing and low-income housing. It will also address homelessness in a very big way, but will also provide protection to tenants who are now seeing their, la their landlords just raise their uh, rents very, very highly uh, because of gentrification. Let's talk about the other issue that has been the biggest debate on the debate stage, which is, um, of course, Medicare for all, which is your, your push um, to get rid of private insurance, have a government-run system. Joe Biden says it's going to cost $30 trillion. How do you pass that okay. when you don't have 60 votes in the Senate okay. and when there's, the Democrats themselves are split on it? Well, we pass it through budget, but I won't bore you with Senate rules, but there is a thing called budget reconciliation. Which, which would be 50 votes 50 instead votes. of so, 60. Exactly, so we can pass it that way. But the main point to be made is that what uh, Joe Biden and Buttigieg and, and others want to do is more or less preserve the status quo. But the status quo healthcare system is dysfunctional. We are now spending, you asked about how much it costs, we're spending twice as much per person in healthcare as the people of any other nation. If you are the average American worker, your family is now spending $12,000 a year out of the 60,000 you're making, 20% of your income. On the Medicare for all, we will substantially lower the cost of healthcare for the overwhelming majority of the American people, maybe not the very, very rich but everybody else will be paying less. It will be comprehensive health care, including dental care, eyeglasses, hearing aids, and home health care. Well, let's just wrap things up to talk about the issue of gratitude, because this is the end of the year. A lot of times this is a moment where people reflect on their year. Um, you had a bit of a health scare this year. I know you're feeling better than you were before and as active as you were before, but did that make you sort of think differently in terms of what you're grateful for as you reflect on the end of the year? Well, on a personal level, I am very blessed. Um, I have a wonderful family. Uh, my wife and I have been married now uh, 31 years. Um, I have four great kids. I have seven extremely beautiful grandchildren. I just wish I had more time to spend with them. Uh, but I am very grateful for my family. I'll tell you the other thing I'm grateful to, and this may sound hokey and political and so forth. Uh, I get around the country a whole lot. And here we are uh, in uh, Riverside, California. And I meet so many beautiful people, so many great people. And it really energizes me and inspires me to see how many great people we have in this country. I know a lot of people are depressed about the political process and the divisiveness and the hatred that's out there. I got that. But you know, from my perspective, running around the country, you really get energy and gratitude for seeing so many beautiful people out there who want to see this country become a much better place. And what are Hanukkah presents for your grandkids? Uh, we're working on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Any, any New Year's resolutions for you? Yeah, to become the Democratic nominee for president <laughs> of the United States and defeat <laughs> Donald Trump. All right. Bernie Sanders, thank you very much. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Our thanks to Senator Bernie Sanders. Amazing how all the candidates seem to have that exact same resolution. Up next, a look at the best of the issue is, but first, some holiday shout outs from our recent panelists. Hi, I'm Michael Reagan, and I just want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday. To my family, my son Cameron, my daughter-in-law, my two granddaughters, my wife Colleen, my daughter Ashley, and all of our friends across the country. Hi, I'm Stephanie Miller, and I just want to say Happy Holidays. Why? Because it makes right-wingers really mad when you don't say Merry Christmas. And I also want to say Happy Holidays to my 96-year-old Trump voting Fox News watching Republican mom. And I'm hoping Trump will be in prison by the time she sees this. Happy Holidays, Mom. <laughs> I wish uh, all your viewers and uh, wish you a happy Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, and a very happy new year. Hi, everybody. I'm Amanda Salas. Happy holidays to you and yours. I want to give a special shout out to my family. That includes my Fox 11 family and the viewers as well. As you saw there over the last year, we've had some incredible guests sitting in that chair and on chairs on the road. We've talked to the president and virtually everyone who wants to be the president. Blink if you're running for president. <laughs>
I think I saw a blink. Alex, That's you're an really exclusive. good. How does a millennial mayor, openly gay man, win the presidency? Well, the path is narrow, but I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't see a path. And what we found is when we get in front of people, they respond. Have you seen enough evidence so far to impeach? Yes. We're pretty divided right now. If no. you were president, how do you Look, put the pieces back together? I think the vast majority of the American people understand what's going on. El Paso, when that shooting happened, how did that change you as a man? But we're going to bring it, and we're going to win. I think having someone who actually has respect on both sides of the aisle, I think it's going to matter. I don't think I'm the most qualified. I think I am as qualified. Does he deserve to be impeached? I don't want to prejudge the process. They don't want four more years of this guy. Is there a party that wants to run against him? I serve have your country? that voice in the back of my head that says to me, if not you, then who? Welcome back to a special edition of The Issue Is from the U.S.-Mexican border. Governor Newsom today saying that some of your ideas regarding asylum show a disregard for the Constitution. And Governor Newsom honestly is living in a different world. And one cannot deny uh, the assault almost on a daily basis of Donald Trump on California values. So could you see yourself voting for Joe Biden over Donald Possibly. Trump? Possibly. And I just don't think we're going to be getting the promises out of Trump unless he feels the heat. The reason why we need to move to impeach him and need to impeach him now is because he is intervening in the next election. Are you ready to vote to impeach? Uh, no. I mean, do you think that the president committed high crimes and misdemeanors? Uh, look, I think that we've got to see this process uh, work itself through. Uh, well, honestly, I don't understand that. Uh, uh, and in many respects, I think it's a cop out. Do you think he'll be strengthened, though, if he is acquitted in the Senate and then you have to run against him? Well, this is the tough part. So, number one, we have to make a case to America for a positive vision that people will get excited about. And when we're talking about Donald Trump, even in the context of impeachment, we are losing. The homeless count up this past year. Considerably up. In your term too, <laughs> in what you are doing in the federal government, what's going wrong? I mean, why is it getting worse? Well, I think, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of things that don't make sense. There's no question LA now has the model. Uh, in fact, in Washington, D.C., at a recent conference, they said, we're the model for how you deal with homelessness. So how is the county, L.A. the model if well, the homeless count is going right, up? Because I, I had the same feeling. Where does that passion for criminal justice reform, for prison reform, come from? I've always been about just what's fair. And when I saw Alice's case, and I just saw that it was so unfair. It's really critical that, that women are enshrined in the Constitution. Our show brings together some pretty unusual combinations of people, and this week is no exception. Welcome to our panel this week. We should be spending $100 million a year on health care for illegal immigrants. People have What's no legal What's the alternative? Right? Let people be sick and die? 60% of Trump supporters thought Obama was not an American citizen and he was a Muslim. I'm not familiar with those numbers, so okay. I, could, I couldn't I, verify I, I feel that. like there's a and lot of numbers you, you're unfamiliar with. Well, <laughs> listen, it sounds like you're getting your facts from the Daily Onion. Do you blame Democrats for anything? Sure. But like what? <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> you know, you can sit in an ivory tower, you can sit as a radio talk show host, or you and can you can try to like slam those people who haven't made it the way you have. All right. I'm just saying mostly we're... Republican when they say unlikable means has vagina. Okay, all right. Oh, we were, we're gonna we're gonna leave it there. Uh, you have one? I do have one. I, did you just ask me if we, I have we, a vagina? Okay, we're going to stop. When numbers. people always ask me about will people go to the movies, I always say it's kind of awkward to have a first date at home. Mm. you got to go out and do something. <laughs> also have to add, by the way, having a first date at home would be both ambitious and direct. <laughs> Who would have thought in a show with Margaret Cho and Ben Lyons, Bob Shrum would have the funniest line and be about Netflix and chill. <laughs> Up next, the fun we've had from the laughs to the games to the basketball, and of course, the dancing. But first, more holiday shout outs. Happy holidays to everyone in the 37th district and to all of my friends and family. I wish you a wonderful, peaceful, happy holiday season. Hi, I'm John Cobelt. I'm Deborah Zara Cobelt, and I'm grateful for a lot of things. Always my three boys. Um, the people I work with who really help me get everything done, uh, the viewers. Um, without you guys, we wouldn't be here. How about you? Me, I hope? Huh? Oh, I'm very grateful for you, yes. Okay. Yes, and the boys. 
and some of the viewers and listeners. And Alex. Not everybody. And Alex, oh, and Alex. For Everybody's sure. grateful for Everybody Alex. Everybody is totally. grateful for Alex. I'm Gianno Caldwell, and I want to give a holiday shout out to my new book, Taken for Granted How Conservatism Can Win Back the Americans That Liberalism Failed. I also want to give a shout out to my Instagram at Gianno Caldwell. Tweet at me there. <laughs> Welcome back. We tackle substantive issues every week here on The Issue Is, but we like to have some fun, too. We believe there's great value in humanizing our leaders and making politics more accessible. So here are some moments we won't soon forget. Just two days ago, I watched at night my son's movie. Um, and it was just wild watching him. He's so talented. And then all of a sudden, there's this sex scene then all of a sudden. Right, and, right. And you see What's the, that like for you? Uh, well, that was, that was like? absolutely wild. You know? <laughs> because I, I, remember, I remember my wife called me the day before, and she says, I just saw Patrick's uh, movie. And uh, it's like unbelievable. And I'm sitting there, and he didn't tell me anything about it. And all of a sudden, I saw his na naked butt there <laughs> having a sex scene. Andrew Yang, great to see you. Alex, always a Thank pleasure. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. He's, he's, he's just as good looking in real life. <laughs> we do something called personal issues on this show. Yes. We do it for 30 seconds, OK? Just the thing I love to do. How yes. do you know what I yeah. love to do? OK, do you have a favorite superhero? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. First concert you went to? I think it was a Dave Matthews show in South Bend. All right, DMB. Favorite conservative? Favorite conservative? Maybe Kevin McCarthy. Best thing about being a Californian? Everything. <laughs> Favorite athlete of all time? Favorite athlete of all time? Floyd Mayweather. Favorite Disney movie? Uh, Little Mermaid. <laughs> We're on Moana right yeah. now. <laughs> My daughter loves it. Favorite Star Wars character? Han Solo. I uh, definitely Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker himself saw that and then tweeted out about it. All right, well, one thing that brings uh, the country together, not the impeachment issue, but Halloween. I did not go full Trudeau. I just like Biggie Smalls and I wore the Coogee sweater. <laughs> and I was working, so I accidentally went as Mayor Pete. How about that? <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, I was a pretty good basketball player. Yeah. My, just mentioning that my <laughs> public school, PS197, won the Brooklyn Borough Championship. Oh. I, don't want, I don't want to brag about it. Legend. But we didn't happen to do that. So what's your key? Like the hook shot, the the running jumper. What, what is was, your what's your uh, what's your go to a move? A very a very stationary jumper right now. Okay. Don't get too far <laughs> off the ground. And Bernie, this one's for you. Yeah. Woo. Try to reach for the ball. It's behind the back. Oh, it's behind the back. Oh, the ball. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Stephen T. There you there go. go. Try <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh wow. there it is. There I'm it is. I'm going to take that with me. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. Classic. Will you, will you dance with yes, me? Yes, honey, we want a political party. Time for life of the party. Let's go. All right, I'll spin to that. Oh. I'm so proud of you. Well, let's go have a glass of Oh, Yes. Never dipped on TV before. <laughs> what's, your, what's your move to, to, to uh, uh, back and forth? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, she's ready. <laughs> there we go. Are you going to celebrate your first anniversary without your favorite guest oh. and dancing partner? All right, Gloria, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, twirl me? <laughs> Let's see that move, Gloria. There it is. There it is. Thank you, Gloria. <laughs> we bring people together here on the issue is the left and right unite the love of Freddie Mercury. Governor, I'm trying to think of how to, to toss to break. If there's a phrase maybe to tell people that I'm going to return, is there something maybe where, is there something you could maybe help me out with on that? Well, there's several things. Yeah. <laughs> you can go, get to the chopper. <laughs> or you can go and say, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> or you can go and say, I'll be back. How can anybody top that? <laughs> that is very nice. As we celebrate the start of 2020, we're expecting one of the most consequential political years in modern American history. And we're excited to announce that our show is expanding. 
Starting next week, not only will the Issue Is be airing in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Diego, but also Fresno, Bakersfield, Palm Springs, Chico, Redding, and other cities. For more on all of that, head to our website, theissueisshow.com. You can also send us an email at theissueis at foxtv.com. All of our past episodes available in podcast form. There's a lot of digital extras. Just search for The Issue Is wherever you stream. I could not be more grateful for you, our viewers, for making all this possible. Big thanks to our guests for coming in, but the biggest thanks goes to our crew, all the guys behind the scenes. On behalf of all of them, I'm Alex Michelson, wishing you a very happy new year.